Hey, hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Cybersecurity Ranger. This is the third video in the series of password attacks. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how you can bypass the Windows security. So we all know that the Windows um, requires a username and password and the passwords are actually stored in a file on the Windows known as the SAM file, right? Now, where do you find this fa file? You can basically go to the um, C drive. You can go to the Windows System 32. In System 32, you can go to the config folder. In config, you will file, uh, find the SAM file. Now, in the older versions of operating system, it was only the SAM file that you needed if you want to, you know, bypass the security. But now you need to have the system file. So in the modern operating systems or the latest version of Windows, they basically lock the SAM file with the system file, kind of an additional layer of security, I would say. Um, now, if I try to copy these files, for instance, uh, into my Kali Linux, I won't be able to do that. And the reason is because the operating system actually does not allow you to copy these files. Um, it could be due to two reasons. Either it is being used by the operating system. So when you're logged in, actually the SAM file is in use by the operating system. The second reason could be that the access control on the Windows does not allow you to copy these files when the operating system is running. So the question is how you can access these files. Well, the answer is very easy that if you are trying to bypass the security of an actual system, which has these SAM files, that system, first of all, should be shut down. Secondly, you need to have a USB. You need to have a ISO image of Kali Linux, and you need to make that USB bootable with that Kali Linux uh, IUS image. How can you make it bootable? It's very easy. You can have a software like Live Linux. There could be other softwares as well. Uh, Live Linux. Sorry. Let's go to Google. Live Linux USB Creator. So this is software that I normally use to make a USB bootable with Kali. You can download the software and then you have the ISO image. You can point this ISO image uh, into, the, into the application and it will make your USB bootable with that Kali Linux. Then you plug in the USB to the system and boot from the USB and you will have the access to the files of the Windows. Uh, and I just showed you where uh, you can find this in Windows System 32 config, you can actually play with these files or, you know, change or the password or remove the password uh, directly on the files on that system, or you can copy them and then change it and then paste it back, right? So it's up to you how you want to do that. What I have done for this demonstration is that I have already copied the SAM files by using the same method and you can see here, I have a SAM file and a system file on Kali, right? So now what we can do with these files, let me show you. So let's go to the folder where I have these files. So you can see here, SAM and system, right? So before I sh uh, use the tool to bypass the security, I will just to show you what exactly is in this SAM file. now. We do know that this SAM file contains the hashes of the passwords and the user account usernames. Um, however, it is being locked by the system file. So let me just show you, for example, if I try to use cat and try to see what is inside the SAM file, it kind of looks like an encrypted file, right? You don't really see or understand what's inside. Some of the things that you can see here is, for instance, uh, this is one user, uh, probably we can see this somewhere administrator mentioned, but overall this file actually is not in the readable format, right? So 
Let me show you the contents of this file. So I'm going to use a tool called SAM dump2. Now SAM dump2 is basically that it dumps the hashes from the SAM file. So what you need to do is that you have to use SAM dump2 and then the system file and then the SAM file, which is there in the directory. And then I can save them basically to a file. I'm going to call it hashes.txt, right? So what this tool has done is that it has basically dumped the user accounts and the hashes of the passwords into a file called hash.txt and unlocking this file using the system file, which is uh, the one that I copied from the operating system. All right, so now we have the hashes.txt. I'm going to show you the contents of hashes.txt. There we go. So now we can see that it has basically the usernames, the administrator, the guest. Um, there's another user, Ali. And then it has the um, user ID, I would say 50, for instance. And then this is basically the hash, the NTLM hash of the Windows. Now, those of you who are aware of the hashes, there are different types of hashes, NTLM hash, MD5. Um, SHA, SHA256, and there are so many types. So Windows basically has the NTLM hash. Now, there are two ways that we can go ahead with this these hashes. One is that we try to crack the hashes, right? For that, I'm going to make another video that how we can actually crack these hashes by using tools like John the Ripper, for instance. However, what I'm going to do now is that I'm not going to do anything with the hashes. This is just to show you that, you know, what is inside the SAM file. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to use a tool called CHNTPW, okay? So this is the tool which is available in Linux, so you don't need to install it. Hyphen I is to interact. And then the file name, SAM file, right? It's, it's a very easy to use tool now. When I use chntpw i sam it basically gives me the option that whether you want to edit the user data and passwords, you want to list the groups, uh, you want to uh, use the registry editor option, um, or you just want to quit. So let's go ahead with the first option that I want to edit the user data and passwords of the SAM file, right? I'll use the option one, press enter. Now, what you see here is that, uh, I think I worked on this file before as well, so, but anyways, you can see here is that you have the administrator account, right? You have another account, Ali, you have guest account, you have some system created accounts, right? Now, what you're seeing here is that the type of the user. So here you can see that it's an admin user. This is an admin user. And here it's not mentioned what type of users they are. Now, remember that I already worked on this file. So this password is blank, means I removed the password. However, the Ali user here, you can see it has a password, which means it is not blank. So if you don't see anything, or if you see something like this, it means there is a password, right? However, this user, I removed the password before. Now, there are different uh, things that you can do. So for example, um, I'm talking about from the attacker's point of view, right? So the attacker or the adversary, um, instead of removing the administrator password, what he would like to do is that he will probably take advantage of the guest user and try to make him an administrator. So I'm going to show you that, that how you can make the user an administrator. But first, I want to show you if you want to remove the password. Remember, you are, we are not cracking the password here. We are trying to remove the password of an account. So this could be helpful for those who forget the administrator password of the Windows and then think about reinstalling it. So you don't need to reinstall it. This tool will basically remove the password of the administrator or any other account that is there on the system. So... So we cannot do anything with the administrator because it's already blank. But what I can do is that Ali is also the administrator. So I'm going to remove the password here, right? So it says here that please enter the user number that you want to modify. So 
by default it has selected this user which is the administrator otherwise you can actually write or type in the number in front of that user and then it will uh, ask you what do you want to do so by default it has already selected the second user that i want to remove the password so i'm just going to press enter now what it says here is that uh what do you want to do now with this user particular user and you can see here the username as well the full name uh, number one, clear the password. Number two, unlock and enable the user account seems unlocked already. So if the user is locked, you need to first unlock it. Otherwise, if it is already unlocked, you can actually just press one and clear the password. So let's try with the option number one. Okay. So when I selected option number one, uh, let's go back and check whether it removed the password or not, right? So uh, I think I will select uh, Q probably. Okay. And then write the option number one. So there we go. You can see here that the password, whatever password was there, it has been removed for this particular user, right? So like I said, if you forget and you want to remove the password, you can do that. But as an as an attacker, he will never want to remove the password. He will probably want to take advantage of some user, which is a guest user, for instance, and try to alleviate the privileges by making him the admin, right? So let's try to see if we can make the guest user as the administrator, right? So I'm going to type in the RID 01F5, right? Now you can see here option number three that what do you want to do with this user? So if an attacker or an adversary has a normal access to the system, he may make himself the administrator without even, uh, you know, letting the administrator know that he's the administrator now, right? So I'm going to choose option number three to promote the user to the administrator. Now it asks me that whether you want to, you know, um, save these uh, changes that I just made. Yes. Let's go back and press Q and press one again. And now you can see that the guest has been promoted to the administrator, right? So now, I have removed the password for the this user. This and this was already removed. And this, for example, this is also a system account. I don't know if it is, uh, you know, we can uh, remove the password, but just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to try to remove. And by the way, this one says it is a locked password. So which means that I have to unlock it first before I make the password blank, right? So, and this is the actual situation in the beginning, when you copy the SAM file, you will see that all of them, the administrator probably will be locked as well, right? So let's try to remove the password for this uh, particular user, 03E8. Right? Okay, so now, if you see here, it says probably locked now. So first of all, you need to unlock it. If you do not unlock it, it is not going to remove the password. So I'm going to press option number two. Now you can see seems unlocked already. Now I'm going to use option number one to clear the password. And then I will quit Q and then check again. So now you can see that I have removed the password for this. Now this is a very interesting tool uh, CHNTPW that can be used to actually bypass the Windows security. Remember, we are not cracking the password. We are, we can either remove the password or if we have the guest access, we can get the administrator privileges and we can also probably make a new user uh, to, or we want to make the user a member of another group is also possible, right? So, so that was the idea behind this particular tool. Now, like I said in the beginning that <clears throat> if you want to modify the files on an actual operating system, you need to have 
a Kali Linux ISO image, make it bootable, uh, make a bootable USB with this image and plug into the system, boot from the USB, and you can have access to these files. By using chntpw, you can modify the files right there. Or if you want to work offline on these files, you can actually copy them <clears throat> into the USB and then you can um, uh, you can uh, do or practice the way I'm doing it, that I have copied the SAM files and then I'm working on them uh, offline, right? If I copy these files back into the into the into the into the directory where these files were, so and replace the the original files, then uh, again all the changes will be effective. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, and share the videos. Um, the next video that I'm going to make will be that if we have the hashes of the passwords, how we can crack those hashes by various tools.